Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. In this video, we're going to continue our chess AI series. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Minimax algorithm and how it works um, and how we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to do just one whole video on the Minimax algorithm. So if you know how to do it, you can go ahead and skip this video and move on to the next one. But let's go ahead and just jump into what the Minimax algorithm is. So the Minimax algorithm is an algorithm that you can use pretty much to play games, anything that has game states or, or states that you can evaluate. Um, so in the case of chess, when you have a certain game state, uh, the white player and the black player both have a set number of pieces in certain situations. And you can pretty much create a heuristic for that game state. You can say, hey, player one is doing this much better than player two. Now, normally with a minimax algorithm, algorithm, you're going to be creating an integer value or decimal value, uh, a numeric value, that represents how well one player is doing. So, for example, if we have a high positive number, maybe player one is beating player two, and if the heuristic gives us a very negative number, then player two is beating player one. Uh, so if you're player one, you want to have a board that is has a heuristic that's that's as far positive as possible. So the way the minimax works is we're going to create a tree, a, a graph of uh, a tree of all the uh, different possible moves that may happen. So let's create a circle here at the top uh, as our root node, and this is going to be the current game state. Now, let's say, for example, we have two possible moves from here. Now, in chess, there's probably going to be more than two possible moves, but we're going to just leave it at two to make it a little bit more simple. So from there, we have these two more options. And let's say from here, each one of these has two more options, two more moves. And from here, each one of these also has two more moves. Okay, so this is going to be our tree of all the possible moves that a player could make. Um, so what we're going to do is take this bottom layer of the graph, or of the tree, and we're going to give each one of those nodes a value. That is, we're going to look at the game board after these three moves, and we're going to see which player has an advantage and by how much they have an advantage. So let's say, for instance, that here we have a 2. Here we got a four, uh, we got a six here, a nine here. So all of these numbers are just the, the heuristic that we're calculating based on the game board. Now what we're gonna do is say it's player one's turn at this root node, so he has these two options. Now player two is gonna be making this next move, and then player one is gonna be making this uh, final move. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have a mini function and a max function. So when we call our max function, that's going to be player one's move. And he's going to want to take the highest number possible. And when the player two makes his move, we're going to assume that they're going to take the most negative number possible. So here, this pop bottom row here is going to be called our, is going to be a max. So we'll write max here in the side. This one here is going to be a min, and the top one is going to be a max again. And then we just go through and evaluate the tree. Uh, the max, we're going to take the max of 2 and 4, that's going to be a 4. The max of 6 and 9 is going to be 9. The max of negative 2 and negative 3 will be negative 2. And the max of 4 and negative 1 is going to be 4. Now, in this next layer, we're just going to be using the mini function and take the minimum value because this player wants to get as negative a value as possible. And finally, we have a max function. So this is going to take the maximum of these two. So it's going to say, hey, let's make this move um, to, to get this value of four. So uh, that means that the player one, this player, is going to be choosing this move. Now this is pretty much how the whole algorithm will work and we're going to implement this, but we're going to add one more feature called alpha beta pruning. That's going to make the algorithm run faster and we can actually get rid of some of the nodes and not even traverse them at all. And let me, let me uh, undo a little bit so I can show you what I mean. 
So let's say we're in this state right here. We're, we're currently evaluating this root node. We are coming down here and we're currently doing the max function on these two. So this is going to be a left to right traversal. So we're currently looking at this node right here and it's taking the max between two and four. We're going to say it's going to take a four. Now we're going to continue going around. We're going to come back up to this node here and go down to the right node. Now, when we're looking at the two down here to take the max of, uh, we're going to take a look at this first one, which is a six. So when the, the six comes back up here and we're, we're, we have this six that we're looking at, uh, before we go down to the nine, we're going to check to see if we should even continue. Right. So remember, this is a maximum function. So the lowest possible value that this node right here could be is a six because it's a maximizer. It's not going to get any lower than that uh, because we're taking the maximum value. So the lowest possible number is going to be a six. Now, when the minimizer is looking at these two values, it's going to be taking the four no matter what. Um, so we're going to be looking at the four. We're not going to even care because we know this is going to be at least a six. So that means we can cross off this entire thing and we don't have to even traverse the node that has this nine on there. So now let's talk about how we're going to be doing this programmatically. Uh, to do it programmatically, we're going to have two variables, one an alpha and one a beta. Now an alpha is going to be the best option, best already explored option along uh, a path to the root um, for, for that given maximizer. And then the the same thing is going to be true for the beta and the minimizer. It's going to be the best already explored option along the path to the root for the minimizer. So let's let's do a little example of how this works. So to start out, uh, we have a maximizer. So the value we're going to assume that's in here, we'll use a V, is going to be starting with negative infinity. Now again, since it's a root, our, our best alpha and our best beta uh, is going to be, again, the best value for the path to the root. Now, there are no options on the path to the root, so those are both also going to be negative and positive infinity. The alpha will be negative infinity, and the beta will be positive infinity. Now, we're going to move down to this node here, and we're going to traverse the left side um, again. Uh, this one is going to be a maximizer, so our v is going to start out at positive infinity or as our current value we're looking at for the node and we're going to check alpha is the best option for the maximizer on the root um, there's none so that's going to be a negative infinity and beta is going to be positive infinity and again we're going to move down to the node and this time we have a minimum so our value is going to be currently negative infinity again or, or it's a maximizer so we're going to have negative infinity now we're going to look at the first leaf node here, which is the two. Uh, again, we're going to have our alpha and beta. So alpha at this point is again, going to be negative infinity and beta is going to be positive infinity. Now uh, for a maximizer, we're going to be checking if the minimizer's best value is less than that current value. So the minimizer's best value right now is positive infinity, um, and our current value is two. Um, so since two is less than positive infinity, we're gonna continue. We're gonna take the two, and we're gonna replace this negative infinity with a two. So now let's check on the next node, the, the right side node here. Again, we're gonna have an alpha and a beta. Now alpha is gonna be as we said before, the best already explored option along the path to the root for the maximizer. So this right here is a maximizer node. So that one is going to be our best value, which is two. And now beta is going to be the best minimizer value for the minimizer along the path to the root. Now the minimizer doesn't have any values along the path to the root. This is going to be the only one here. Um, that could possibly have a value, but it does not. So this is going to stay at positive infinity. So we're going to continue on because four is less than positive infinity. 
So four is gonna come up here. We're gonna replace the two with a four. And now we're done, so we're gonna take the maximum value there, which is the four. So now we're gonna move back up here um, to this minimizer node. Now V, instead of being positive infinity, uh, is gonna be four. And now alpha is gonna be the best value um, from here to the root, and beta is gonna be the best for the minimizer from here to the root, and there are no values between here and the root for either one of these. And since this is a minimizer, we're gonna be checking if this four is greater than the maximizer's best value, which is negative infinity. Now it is greater than negative infinity, so we're gonna continue. So we're gonna go down the right side here, and now we have an alpha uh, of negative infinity, remember, because this is along the path to the root. So even though we have a four and a maximizer down here, we're only looking at the maximizer nodes that are in the path to the root. So alpha is gonna be negative infinity, and beta, instead of being positive infinity, we have a four right here. Um, so we're gonna be using that four because that is better for the minimizer than positive infinity. So then we're gonna go down to this leaf node here, uh, and we have a alpha, again, of negative infinity, and a beta of four. So now we're gonna be checking this six value right here to see if six is greater than the minimizer's best value. So the minimizer's best value is already a four, and look at that, six is greater than four. So now we know, hey, we're done. We don't need to check any more of the nodes here. So that's how alpha and beta are gonna be used, and that way we can cut off chunks of the tree that we do not have to follow. So in the next video, we're gonna actually implement this and see if we can get the, the chess AI to play against. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next video.